Hello class! So it's me again, Engineer Chandray Pacturanan. So this time, ang sasagutan naman natin is this example number 11 na nakikita nyo sa inyong screen. So this will be our on the example para sa application of moment area method sa mga simple beam if the beam is non-prismatic na nakikita nyo ngayon sa inyong screen. So sige, simulan na natin class ang ating discussion. So basahin ko lang yung problem. Example 11. Consider the non-prismatic beam loaded as shown below. The flexural rigidity of the beam from A to C is 2EI. So, ito siya. And from D to E, a C to E, is EI lang. So, kung familiar sa inyo class itong beam na to, so yes, kasi nga, um, ginamit na natin itong beam na ito for the discussion sa double integration method. So, in fact, ito nga yung mga tanong niya class. No? So, letter A. What is the deflection at point B? So, kung titingnan natin class, yung point B natin class is ito. Okay? So, next, letter B. What is the deflection in point C? So, yung point C is yung tagpuan ng pagbabago ng flexural rigidity. And yung letter C class, what is the deflection at D? So, nandito rin siya. So, take note of this, no? Compare your answers to the example or compare your answers to the answer in example number 7 for the chapter 8, the double integration method. So sige, simulan na natin class ang pag-solve nito. So punta ko sa ating OneNote and kung mapapansin nyo class, I already paste the problems and the required as well as the reactions. So ulitin ko sa mga previous problem then if you want to make sure that my solution for the reactions are correct, all you need to do is to pause this video for a while and compute nyo siya using statics. Pero class, I do believe naman na tama siya. Okay? So next, ang gagawin natin is ilalagay na natin yung fixity or yung line kung saan natin gagawa ng reference yung pagdo-drawing class ng mga um, moment diagram by parts. Okay, no? So, sabi nga natin sa rule, wala naman nga talagang general rule kung saan mo siya ilalagay. So, discarte mo na lang yung class kung paano mo yun um, ko, ko, o paano mo siya i-drawing. Pero usually, dinodrawing mo siya class sa point kung saan mas madali yung computation ng mga moment at the same time, yung ating center of gravity sa mga spandrels. Okay? So, I hope nagkakaintindihan tayo. So, siguro, ang gagawin ko class, since nagbago kasi yung flexural rigidity sa point C, dun ko ilalagay yung fixity ko. Pero ulitin ko, walang definite rule na nagsasabing dapat dun mo siya ilagay. Nakukuha nyo, no? So, I hope that is clear. So, common ano lang siya, common na discarte lang, no? Na ilagay natin siya sa point C class. Okay? So, sige. Simulan na muna natin yung sketching dito class sa kaliwa. No? Sa kaliwa, walang problema ng C dahil puro lang naman siya mga concentrated load. Halimbawa, yung 43.25 class, no? yung 43.25, multiply mo lang naman ng 4. So, that will be 173. So, pag drenowing natin yan dito, no? positive siya due to the fact na upward siya class. So, um, nandito na siya. Ilan nga siya? 173. And at the same time, this will be a first degree 1. So, lagay natin siya. Then, bahala ka nang mag-design-design nito. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, next to be considered naman is of course yung isang concentrated load na 40 kN and that has a distance of 2 meters lang naman. So, kahit mentalin mo lang naman yan, 40 times 2 is 80. Okay? So, therefore, ang mangyayari, drawing natin siya dito and... This will be equal to negative 80. Okay? Kasi nga, downward siya. The problem starts dito class sa baba. O, sa kanan. This is where the problem starts nga. Kasi nga, kung titingnan nyo, uh, medyo mahirap itong uh, mga orientation ng load. So, by the way, since 20 kN siya, pwede nga natin tong hatiin dito. Tapos, of course, yung height nitong rectangle class will still be 5 kN per meter while the height of the triangle will be 15 kilonewton per meter. Okay, no? So, ganito ang mangyayari dyan, class. Okay? So, wait lang nun. Ang next na gagawin natin is magbabayad utang tayo. So, mangungutang muna tayo nitong load na to, class. I think baguhin ko yung kulay instead of using orange. I'm gonna use red para sa um, mga utang. Ayan. So, yan. Diretso natin siya. Para maging rectangle na lang siya. Diba no? So, pag naging rectangle, uh, ito na yung kalalabasan niya. So, therefore, 
Kung titingnan nyo, umutang ka class ng rectangle simula dito hanggang dito na 15 tapos pababa siya. Well, of course, no? Pag dinerecho natin yan dito, ang kalalabasan pa ganito. Babayaran mo siya ng height na 15. Okay? So, ito na class ang magiging itsura ng bayad mo. Kaya lang, still, ang inyong rectangle, since this is 15 na, this is 15, ang inyong rectangle class ay hindi pa talaga bayad na bayad, no? Kung titingnan mo, hindi pa talaga siya magiging, ay sorry, bayad na siya. Ang problema lang ay dapat diretso tong rectangle, ano, ah, triangle. Medyo namamali ako, no? I am referring to this triangle. So, therefore, dapat idiretso natin to ulit kasi dapat straight triangle ang kalalabasan niya. Kaya from 15, dadagdagan mo pa to by ratio and proportion kasi 15 is to 3, dapat x is to, is to 30. So, dapat 30 siya. So, 15 dito, tapos 15 din dito. Okay? So, I hope nag-gets nyo yung konsepto ng bayad utang, pero kailangan mo pa rin tong idagdag. Kasi yung original na figure, ito siya class, dapat idagdag mo pa rin dito. So, dito class, matetest yung creativity nyo sa pagbabayad utang. Okay? So, this will be equal to another 15 kN per meter. So, in general, because of this bayad utang principle, ang mangyayari class, meron tayo ditong uniform load na ang height talaga ay 15 times 5, 20. Tapos, meron pa tayo ditong ano, triangular load na 15 which is madali lang naman siyang i-drawing. And sa case naman dito, automatic ang magiging ano niya is triangle na 30. So, since ano naman, recorded video naman na to, pwede nyo siyang balikan para mas maintindihan nyo yung bayad utang, i-erase ko na to, tapos mag-drawing tayo class ng mas madaling i-drawing na, or mas madaling intindihin na mga figures, which is result lang naman ng bayad utang. So, ano nga yung naging result? Magkakaroon dito ng distributed load na 20. Okay, no? So, 20. Pero yung reaction pala, hindi yun mababago class. This is 20 kilonewton per meter at the same time meron pa tayo ditong triangular load na 15 kilonewton per meter okay so this is 15 kilonewton per meter on the other hand sa baba yung ating inutang na 30 kilonewtons total yun of 30 okay so ito siya class no upward ito ulitin ko although nagbayad utang tayo Um, walang mababago sa ating mga support reactions, okay? So, by the way, dito sa point D, alam natin na 15 kN per meter to by ratio and proportion. So, ito na yung i-consider natin na load, pero parehas lang naman siya dito sa original figure natin class, nagbayad utang lang. So, ulitin ko, ang creativity nyo class sa bayad utang matetest dito. Eh, sir, di ba dapat dito ka na lang naglagay ng fixity sa point E? Oo nga, no? Pwede naman sana para wala ng bayad utang. Yes, pwede yun class. The problem here is non-prismatic kasi to. Eh kung maalala nyo, doon sa mga cantilever beam, kapag non-prismatic, meron, meron pa tayong step to sa pag-drawing ng ating diagram, di ba? Which is the modification. Okay, no? So, kailangan pa natin yun i-modify. So, meron tayong initial na moment diagram, tapos i-modify pa natin yun depende sa kanyang flexural rigidity. Okay, so ngayon, tapusin ko muna itong moment diagram nga, um, considering this load. So, unahin ko muna class, of course, this ano, triangular load, 49.25 times 6 meters. Okay, so computein natin siya as 49.25 times 6 meters, right? Ang magiging sagot ay 295.5. So, lagay mo lang siya dyan. Drawing mo na lang to as 295.5. I think, ah, sorry. Dito natin siya ilagay. Ayan. Tapos, design-design na lang ng onte Ilagay mo yung 295.5. Basta alam mo kung saan mo siya nilalagay, no? 295.5. Next, meron tayo class first degree. Ah, meron tayong triangular load na i-consider. By the way, labelan ko muna tas first degree. Kasi itong triangular class is upward. So, therefore, that will be equal to um, one half ng 30 times 6. That will be the equivalent concentrated load. Considering point C, yung kanyang center of gravity ay one third ng 6. Okay? So, the moment will be 180. So, pag drinawing natin siya ngayon, magiging spandrel siya ng third degree curve. Okay? So, I hope that is clear. 
So, this will be 180. And, yun na nga, ilagay na natin siya as third degree. So, next natin, I co-consider is itong distributed load. Simple lang naman siya. 20 times 6. Tapos, multiply natin ng one half ng 6. Kasi nga, yun yung center of uh, gravity ng rectangle. 360 siya class. So, therefore, pag drinawing natin yon magiging ganito. Do not forget to place the degree of the curve kasi nga, yun yung magiging guide nyo class sa analysis. Okay? Ilan nga siya? 360 class. Of course, negative 360. So, lastly, to consider is this triangular load na 15. Madali lang naman siya. 1 half of 15. Multiply natin ng 3 times. One third ng three, of course, kasi considering the center of gravity of the triangle, so forty-five over two or twenty-two point five. Okay, so drawing natin siya. By the way, this is a second degree, kasi galing siya sa distributed load. However, ang next na ido drawing natin will be a third degree, dahil galing siya sa triangular load. Okay, so lagay natin siya as third degree, and that is equal to ilan nga siya class? Wait lang, ah, twenty-two point five. So, of course, that will be negative, right? Negative 22.5. So, ito na yung ating moment diagram by parts, right? So, erase ko lang tong sobra para naman may additional space pa tayo. So, after natin nito class makompute, ang next na gagawin natin is, of course, imomodify natin yung moment diagram simply because the beam is non-prismatic. Okay, no? So, ilagay na natin as the modified. Bakit M? Modified. Moment diagram by parts, no? So, yung step din lang naman ng pag-modify dito, class, madali lang. Dito sa, ano, kaliwa ng C, meron tayong flexural rigidity na 2EI. Well, sa kanan, EI lang naman yung kanyang flexural rigidity, di ba? Nakalagay yun, class, sa problem from A to C to EI, while from C to E, that is EI. So, sige, ready na natin, class, ang modification. So, ayan na class. Tada! Na-ready ko na yung pagdodrawingan natin ng modification. Pero, madali lang naman siya, di ba? Titingnan nyo lang naman yung coefficient ng mga flexural rigidity. So, uh, if you want to further understand the modification process ng M over EI diagram, all you need to do is to watch the previous video sa playlist na ito class, no? So, ang gagawin ko lang, since ito class 2 EI siya, ang gawin mo, itong 173, i-divide mo ng 2, so as itong 80. Pero since sa kanan class, naka-EI na siya, there is no need to um, perform division. Okay, so unahin ko muna to. Ang gagawin mo lang is 173 over 2. Baka yung iba magtaka saan galing yung 2. Malamang yung coefficient ng ating flexural rigidity. So that is equal to um, 86.5. Okay, so drawing natin siya dito. Ito na siya. 86.5 On the other hand uh, May co-consider pa tayong Recta at triangle 80 ulit So 80 divided by 2 Common sense 40 din lang naman siya And both of them naman pala ay first degree Sorry So we need to place the degree no Sa triangle actually Kahit huwag ka nang maglagay ng degree Kasi nga napaka Um, understood na triangle siya. Kaya lang sa mga spandrels class ng parabola and for the third degree curve, maglagay ka para hindi ka makalimutan sa formula or hindi mo malimutan sa first degree. However, for this part class, there is no need to adjust kasi nga AI na siya, no? So, yun yung process natin ng modification. So, yes, no need to adjust. Drawing agad natin siya as is. So, bilisan ko lang to. So, yung nandito, that is 295.5. 295.5 and of course we need to consider as well the spandrel third degree na to and its height is 180 okay so 180 siya drawing mo lang yun class no nandito siya ayan so 180 and this is a third degree So, first degree din dito. Gayon din, dito sa baba, i-consider na natin itong negative 360. So, of course, that is a second degree dahil galing siya doon sa uniform load. Okay, so ito na siya class. 
So, negative 360. And lastly, yung third degree na 22.5. Tada! So, negative 22.5. So, labelan ko din pala ng degree, second degree, and third degree. I hope alam nyo na rin yung mga distances. So, by the way, this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, this is point D, and this is point E. Okay? So, yung distances naman, class nandito, 2 meters, 2 meters, 3 meters, and 3 meters. So, ayang napakarami na ng oras na nasayang natin for drawing lang ng moment diagram by parts. Actually, syempre, since dinidiscuss ko to, talagang matagal itong video na to. Pero kapag ikaw ay nag-solve, tapos ang familiar ka na dito sa moment diagram by parts, magiging mas favorite mo na to as compared sa double integration method. Pero kung ako pa rin ang tatanungin, double integration method is much better in all aspects. Kasi nga, um, although mahaba siya, but the ano, the advantage in double integration method, once you establish the function, all you need to do is to substitute. And kayang-kaya ni double integration method class mahanap ang mga maximum, ano no, maximum deflection. Okay? So, bakit ba napaka-importante pala ng maximum deflection? Kasi, um, in design, meron lang tayong limit na deflection. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali sa mga beams, no, for service requirements, dapat the maximum deflection is equal to its span length over 360. Yun lang dapat ang maximum deflection kasi pangit ng building class na nakikita mo yung deflection. Parang yung, ano, yung nakatira, feeling niya hindi safe kasi ang bilis mag-deflect ng inyong structure. So, of course, deflection, hindi mo ma-avoid class ang reflection. Every deformable body will deflect. Since everything is deformable, so, syempre, everything na mga, every beam, magde-deflect talaga yan. Okay, tama na ng kwentuhan. So, unang tanong, balikan natin tong PowerPoint. What is the deflection at B? Sige. So, by the way, mag-drawing muna pala ako ng elastic curve ng ano natin, no, ng beam. So, sige, wait lang. Sorry, i-drawing pala muna natin yung elastic curve of the beam, no? So, elastic curve. The length of the beam class is 10 meters, no? Although non-prismatic yan. So, ito siya. Hindi na natin, wag na natin ilagay yung load. Basta simply supported siya. Okay na to. Tapos, the beam will deflect in this manner. So, ayan siya. Tapos, yung mga points class na needed natin, point A, point B, point C, point D, and point E. And lastly, the distances, no? So, this is 2 meters, tapos 2 meters, 3 meters, 3 meters. And muntik kong makalimutan is yung slope natin sa A kasi yun yung kailangan natin. So, yung unang tanong class is the deflection at B, right? So, lagay natin siya dito, letter A. What is the deflection? at point B. So, kung titingnan natin, class, itong elastic curve, so, mafo-form mo dito yung ratio and proportion, no? So, alam natin, dito, this is the deviation of point E with respect to the slope at A. Tapos, yung nandito naman is the deviation of B with respect to A. So, of course, yung nandito is the deflection at B. Okay? So, alam yung dalawang deviations nga siya. So, kung babalikan nyo nga yung unang dalawang examples for the simply supported beam, parehas lang to. Class, walang mababago. So, all you need to do is to look for two deviations and of course, by drawing ratio and proportion. Okay? So, dapat, no, expected pala natin na dapat positive ang maging sagot sa dalawang deviation kasi the points are above the slope. Okay? So, yung step 1, Simulan na natin yung computation. Hanapin muna natin yung EI, deviation of E, with respect sa point A, which is ang formula niya ay equal sa yung area between A and E. Multiply natin plus ng centroidal distance ng kada area with respect palagi sa point E. Kasi nga, ba yun yung unang nakasulat dito sa deviation. So, yun lang naman, ba ang palatandaan natin. Of course, class, ang gagamitin nyo is the modified moment diagram, this one. Okay? Not the previous one. Kasi nga, hindi pa to modified due to the fact na iba nga yung ating um, elastic rigidity or flexural rigidity. Sige, anyway, simulan na natin. Dalawang triangles lang naman yan. So, one half. Multiplied by 4, tapos, uh, nandito siya, 86.5, 86.5. Multiplied natin ng kanyang centroidal distance, 
6 meters plus 1 third ng 4. So, check natin yung validity niya kung tama siya. 6 meters ito class from C to E. Tapos, malamang sa malamang, the center of gravity of this is here. Ganon din pala dito, ilagay ko na sa kaliwa. Okay? So, since 4 meters ang base niya, dapat 1 third ng 4. I hope na walang nalilito sa pag-compute ng mga centroids natin. So, next to be considered is yung another rectangle, a triangle, 1 half ng 2, negative 40, Multiplied natin ng 6 plus 1 third ng 2. Check natin yung validity niya kung tama siya. Okay? 2, 40, yes. Tapos dapat ito ay 6 plus 1 third ng 2. Yes, tama siya. So, next to be considered is ito naman na um, third degree to. At tandaan nyo, since third degree siya, dapat ang magiging kalalabasan ng inyong computation ay 1 fourth. Ang base natin ay 6 tapos ang height niya I 180. I am referring to this one muna. Ah. 180. Then, of course, ang kanyang centroid is magiging 4 fifths siya, di ba? 4 fifths ng 6. Tama ba, class? Na 4 fifths ng 6? Yes. Kasi, class, kung titingnan nyo to, um, since 3 degree siya, malamang yung ito, vertex ito. Di ba? Automatic vertex. Yan. Tapos, uh, dito yung kanyang center of gravity. So, this is 1 fifth. Malamang, ang concern natin is from point E, dapat maging 4 fifths siya. Okay? So, next tayo for this triangle na naman, no? Um, 295.5 yung height niya. So, sa case ng triangle, 1 half lang siya. 1 half ng base ay 6. 295.5 yung kanyang height. Multiplied lang natin ng 2 thirds ng 6. Check nga ulit natin kasi minsan nagkakamali ako. Yes, okay, tama siya. Next, for the second degree, spandrel. So, that will be equal to uh, 1 third. Ang base natin ay 6. Ang height niya ay negative 360 class. Okay? So, just place the negative 360 here. Multiply natin siya ng 3 fourths ng 6. Tama ba? Na 3 fourths siya. Yes, kasi nga, uh, nandito yung kanyang center of gravity class. This will be 1 fourth of 6. And this will be 3 fourth of 6. Considering point A yung reference natin. And lastly, meron pa tayong third degree curve. no? Um, lagay na lang natin siya as 1 fourth. Tapos, ang base niya ay 3. Negative 22.5. Multiplied natin ng 3 plus 4 fifth ng 3. Check ko nga siya class kung tama. Tama ba? 1 fourth ng 3 ito, 22.5. Yung center of gravity niya class ay located dito. So, this is 3 meters. Tapos ito, 3 meters din to. So, 3 plus 4 fifth ng 3. So, pwede mo rin naman ngang isulat na 4 min ay 6 minus 1 fifth of 3. Wala namang nagpipigil sa inyo yun. No? Bahala ka na lang maglagay ng center of gravity distance niya from the point E. Okay? So, I hope this ano, discussion is clear. So, all we need to do na lang class is to compute for this one. So, therefore, ang magiging E ay deviation of E with respect sa point A ay equal sa compute nyo na lang Mako-compute natin ay 20,103 over 8. So, 20,103 over 8. So, ito na class yung deviation natin. So, next na i-consider na natin is of course class is yung EI deviation ng B with respect naman sa A. So, which is ang formula lang naman niya, ba is yung area between A to B na lang. Multiplied lang natin ng centroid with respect sa B. So, kung titingnan nyo ito class na figure, ang concern lang naman natin is itong triangle lang. Actually, itong triangle lang class yung nasa gitna ni A to B. And by ratio and proportion, ang mangyayari, 86.5 divided by 2 lang. So, 1 half. So, this is 43.25. So, gusto ko ang focus nyo lang ay itong triangle class na shaded ngayon. Kasi nga, yun lang naman ang kailangan natin ngayon para mahanap yung deviation. So, I hope that is clear. So, sige. Kumbitin lang natin siya as 1 half ng 2 meters lang kasi yung from A to B, ba Tapos, kumbitin natin 43.25 times the center of gravity, 1 third ng 2. Check natin yung tama siya class. Kasi nga, kung ito lang ang i-consider natin na shaded, no? So, hindi ko na kasi class in-isolate, unlike sa other examples na napanood ninyo dito. Pero, basta imagine ninyo, itong other figures class are not existing. I am just referring the area from A to B. E di ba, automatic, the center of gravity of that one will be located here. And considering point B, that is 
one third of two meters, di ba? So automatic one third of two. And if we compute for this one, ang kalalabasan ay sorry one half ng two, tapos forty three point twenty five, tama ba? Times one third sya ng two, okay? So ang lalabas ay one hundred seventy six over three. So, both of them class ay positive. So, ibig sabihin, tama yung ating pagka-sketch. Kasi nga, dapat parehas sila positive dahil parehas ng points ay nasa taas ni elast ni slope. So, yung step 3, alam nyo naman, ratio and I sketching lang naman to, which is parehas lang naman siya nitong una. By the way, nagkamali pala ako class ng pagkasulat. This must be 173 over 6, okay? Ayusin ko lang siya, 173 over 6. So, for the step 3, which is the sketching part, No? 10 meters yung length ng beam. Wait lang. This will take a while. Actually, do not expect in the theory of structures that the solution are just magic. No? Talagang uh, sa theory, tip ko lang dito class susubukin yung patient, uh, patience niya sa mga long solution. Anyway, uh, ito yung mga figures natin. So, nandito siya. So, this will be the deviation. Pero, kapag nagdo-drawing pala, tatawagin ko to as EI, deviation of E with respect to A. By the way, I forget to place the points A, B, and E. Tapos, this will be 2 meters and this is 8 meters, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, itong portion na to, this will be EI, deviation of B with respect to A. And lastly, yung EI deflection at B. So, wala na nga ditong sign convention class na magaganap. So, anyway, since pare-parehas lang naman din ang process, punta na tayo sa step 4 which is the ratio and proportion. So, sa ratio and proportion, isulat lang natin from the small triangle, EI deviation of B plus I deflection at B plus EI deviation of B with respect to A is to 2 meters. Tama ba? This will be 2 meters and that is equal to um, EI, deviation of E with respect to A is to 10 meters. So, just substitute the two deviations that we obtained um, previously. So, this will be EI, deflection at B, plus 173 over 6 divided by 2 is equal to EI, ah, sorry, the EI deviation at A is equal to 2103 over 8, right? So, 2103 over 8 divided by 10. So, therefore, ang mahahanap natin class na EI, deflection at B using um, shape solve na lang siya. So, this will be X plus 173 over 6 is to 2. That is equal to 2103 over 8 is to 10. So, the correct answer will be 473.7417. 473.7417. Or, of course, the deflection at B will be 473.7417 all over EI. So, i-box na lang natin. I-indicate natin, class, that this is downward. Kasi nga, yun na lang naman ang magagawa natin. Wala na ditong magne-negative class due to the nature of the ratio and proportion. So, we check not in class from the double integration method kung tama siya. Dapat ang lalabas is negative siya kasi downward siya. Kung double integration method. So, ito na class. Yung sagot natin kung maalala nyo sa chapter 8, ito yung napakahabang process niya class from the double integration, right? So, ito siya. Napakahaba niya. And the final answer, dito siya, the deflection at B is negative 473.7417. So, our solution is correct, no? Kasi nga, positive, ay sorry, downward siya, di ba? And the numerical values class are equal, no? So, balikan natin. O, oh, ito siya. So, therefore, the validity of the moment area theorem is okay. So, ulitin ko nga, no? Kapag nagko-compute ka class, no? or kapag nagko-compute ka ng deflection, even the slope, kahit anong methods ang gamitin mo dito, dapat parehas ang mahanap mo, simply because um, there are just ano, methods lang siya. But still, dapat pare-parehas ang maging final answer mo dito. Okay, so sige. Pwede na tayong mag-proceed sa question B, the deflection at C.
Okay, no? So, sige, pwede na natin gawin ito. Unang step dito, by the way, balikan nga natin itong elastic curve natin para matulungan tayo, class, sa pag-compute ng kanyang deflection. Erase ko muna to. So, as this one, ba? Diba? Ito okay lang to. So, ngayon, dito tayo sa C. So, this will be the deflection at C. On the other hand, class, no? This will be, ito naman, no? This will be the deviation at C with respect to the slope at A. So, dalawang deviations ang kailangan natin ngayon, class. Okay? So, therefore, ang unang step is, of course, kailangan natin mahanap yung EI, deviation of E with respect to A. But, wag kang mag-alala na compute na natin yun kanina from the previous one, no? This is 20,103 over 8. Okay? So, ilagay natin siya 20,103 over 8. Yung pangalawa na lang, yung po problemahin natin dito is EI deviation of C over or with respect to A. EI deviation of C with respect to A, which is ang formula lang naman, is area between AC multiply natin ng center of gravity with respect sa point C. Okay? So, kung pabalikan natin itong modified moment diagram natin from point A to point C, itong dalawa lang naman class na triangles ang problema natin. By the way, erase ko muna to wait. Wala. Wait lang ah. Ito na siya class, no? Ulitin ko lang yung sinabi ko. Dapat ang i-consider lang natin itong triangle from A to C, which is madali lang naman siya. So, I think there is no need for me class na i-drawing ko pa yon no? So, therefore, uh, simulan na natin class yung computation niya para masolve na natin tong deflection. So, unahin ko muna pala, sorry, itong triangle na to, 86.5 yung kanyang height. So, that will be equal to 1 half. ng 86.5 multiply natin class ng or, oh sorry dapat pala una muna yung base na 4 meter so pares din lang naman yon tapos 86.5 multiply natin ng center of gravity 1 third ng 4 kasi nga considering point C na siya class so balikan natin ito siya this will be 1 third of 4 on the other hand for another triangle naman that will be um, 1 half ng another 2 meters negative 40, and its center of gravity is 1 third ng 2. Tama ba? So, yes. Kasi nga, 2 meters lang naman to class. Okay? So, next, computein natin siya dito. Ang magiging sagot na natin ay, so, 1 half ng 4, 86.5 times 1 third ng 4 nga. So, may hawak na lang kasi akong calculator para mas mabilis. Ang sagot natin ay 204. So, parehas sila class positive kasi nga, as expected, this must be positive nga. No? From the drawing na ano kung na no. Sorry, balikan natin from here kasi para silang nasa taas. So, from the after natin magawa class yung unang dalawang steps, we can now proceed to the step 3 which is what? The ratio and proportion part. I sorry, the sketching of the uh, beam itself. Sige? Simulan na natin class para... Matapos na natin itong pangalawang tanong. So, ito siya. Drawing natin dito. Ito yung support. Tapos, yung elastic curve na dito. Next to consider is, of course, the slope at A. Ito siya. Then, the, def uh, the deviations. This is EI. Deviation of E with respect sa A. By the way, this is point A, this is point C, this is point E, right? Okay, so nalagay ko na class yung mga points. Tapos, uh, this is 4 meters, this is 6 meters. Yung deflection pala, EI, deflection at C. Tapos, EI, uh, deviation of C with respect sa A. Okay, so I hope naiintindihan nyo to, no? Kasi ilang beses na rin naman natin tong ginawa. So, lastly, for the step 4 naman tayo, ratio and proportion. Okay? So, automatic na mga EI na siya class, no? There is no need to adjust pa. Kasi nga, um, in the first place, na-adjust na nga natin yung ano niya, effect nung EI. Kaya nga tayo may tinatawag na modified moment diagram. Kasi, 
dito pa lang adjusted na siya. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So, sige, computein na natin siya as EI deflection at C plus EI deviation at C with respect sa A is to 4 meters that is equal to EI deviation at E with respect to A is to 10 meters. So, just substitute plus the deviations that we had. So, unahin ko muna EI deflection at C plus 204 is to 4 meters is to 20, 103 over 8. Puka siyang 6. So, baguhin ko lang. 20, 103 over 8 is to 10. So, using shift sold na lang, ang EI deflection at C natin is equal to, so, X plus 204 is to 4 equal siya sa 20, 103 over 8 is to 10. Okay. So, ang magiging final answer natin ay 801.15. Okay? So, 801.15 siya. But, of course, you know na ang talagang magiging final answer for the deflection at C is 801.15 over EI. And this will be what? Downward siya from the drawing class. No? So, therefore... Nandito na siya, box natin. This will be our final answer. I-check ulit natin using the double integration method class. So, from DIM, uh, ito siya. Negative 801.15 over EI. So, it means class that our solution is correct. Ganun lang naman siya. Okay, so last na tayo, the deflection at D. So, balik tayo doon. No, so, ito siya. For the third and last question for this situation, so, sulat ko lang siya. Question letter C. What is the deflection at point D? So, kung babalikan natin, class, itong drawing for the elastic curve, actually, magiging parehas lang to, class. No? Magiging, um, katulad lang siya, class, nung mga ginawa lang natin for the first two, questions no. Ito yung point D. This will be the deflection at D. At the same time, um, this will be the deviation of D with respect to A. Tama ba? Yes, tama class. Kaya lang, kung titingnan nyo class, kapag hinahanap natin yung deviation ng D with respect sa A, merong problema. Alam nyo ba kung ano yung problema? Kung titingnan nyo yung area from A to D, mas complicated siya. Yung area natin from A to D is very much complicated as compared ng D to E. Kasi class, yung D to E, kaya lang natin to using ratio and proportion. Halimbawa ito, kaya kung mahanap to using ratio and proportion, ito, um, squared property of parabola. Tapos ito yung cube, di ba? Naturo ko na yung ratio and proportion properties nito sa separate na video na nasa playlist din, no? So, ang point ko dito, mahirap class hanapin yung deviation from A to D or from D with respect sa A kasi sobrang complicated nitong area from A to D. Pero may diskarte ka ba na pwedeng gawin dito? Yes, meron. Sa pagkakataong ito class, iba ang gagawin kong process ng pag-compute ng deflection. So, paano class? Since sabi mo, parang mas madali yung D to E kasi nga ito, Mga spandrel pa rin naman to using the ano, uh, cube property and ito squared property kaya kung mahanap yung height niya. So, kaya kung mahanap yung deviation dito. So, what if class? Ibahin ko ngayon yung diskarte. Ang gagawin ko, babalik ta rin ko yung slope. So, ang slope natin ay nakadrawing na dito. Nasa point E na siya. And in that case, no? Ang mangyayari, ang kailangan ko na is the deviation of A with respect to E. Di ba nga, uulitin natin sa introduction natin, the deviation of E with respect to A is not equal to the deviation of A with respect to E. So, we need to look for that. Pero okay lang kasi nga, ang formula ng deviation of E with respect to A, ah sorry, yung formula ng deviation of A with respect to E is simply equal to yung area sa A e pa rin, Pero, multiplied na lang ng centroid ng A. Unlike dito, yung formula niya is yung area pa rin ng AE, kaya lang multiplied ng centroid ng E. Itong una class, ito yung ginamit natin. Ito siya. Okay? So, ito yung naging final answer. Pero, kailangan natin ulit computein ito for the purpose of this problem. Kasi nga, feeling nyo, mas madali na sa 
point din ngayon yung ganitong approach, okay? So, may kanya-kanya nga tayo dito magiging discard class, okay? So, next, of course, is ito na nga, ang kailangan natin gawin, hanapin mo yung deviation of D with respect to the slope at E. Mas madali din siya class, ito. Kasi nga, mas madali yung D as compared sa A, B, C, D. So, I hope that is clear to, ano no, that is clear to all, all of you. Saka, at least, may isang example ako na pinapresent using the right ano right support bilang yung slope naman na i-consider. So, ulitin ko, the discarte here is very ano diverse. So, may kanya-kanya tayong approach. Basta tandaan nyo lang yung mga basic theorems. Okay? So, since baliktad na nga, ang unang step ko dito, panibago class, hahanapin ko yung EI deviation of A with respect sa E, which is ang formula ay area sa AE multiplied natin ng centroid from point A. So, parehas lang naman siya nito with an exception of yung lahat ng centroids natin with reference na sa point A na. So, unahin ko muna yung triangle. I am referring to this one, no? Ito. So, 1 half, 86.4 ah, times 86.5. 1 half ng 4, then 86.5. Multiplied natin siya class this time 2 thirds ng 4. I hope that is clear. So, next natin ay consider is yung 1 half ng 2, uh, negative 40. Multiplied natin ng 3 plus 2 thirds ng 2. Ah, sorry. 2 plus 2 thirds ng 2. Wait lang ah. I-ano ko siya. So, yung una, I hope na gets nyo to. Uh, nandito siya. 1 half ng 4, 86.5. 2 thirds ito ng 4. Itong pangalawa class, 1 half ng 2, 2 ito, tapos negative 40, malamang 2 plus 2 thirds of 2. So, kung makikita nyo class, um, ito yung nilagay ko. Okay? I hope that is clear. So, next natin, nagagawin, parang sobrang layo naman nito, ayusin ko lang yung pagkasulat. 2 thirds ng 2. So, next na i-consider natin is yung spandrel ng 4th. So, 1 fourth siya ng, ilan siya? 1 fourth ng 6 meters. Tapos, taas ko na nga para hindi ako magkamali. 6 meters, 180 to. So, sige, sulat natin siya as 180. Tapos, yung centroid niya ay 4 plus 1 fifth ng 6. So, check ko. Baka yung iba nagtataka. Bakit yan? E eh, ba malamang 4 meters ang A to C. Tapos, ito, 1 fifth ito ng 6 meter. Kasi nga, third degree, 4 fifth dito, then 1 fifth. So, I hope hindi kayo nagkakalituhan dyan. So, next, another, for triangle naman, 1 half ng 4, uh, 6, 295.5. Okay? So, lagay natin siya as 1 half ng 6, 295.5. Multiplied natin siya ng 4 plus one third ng 6. Tama ba? Check natin kung tama. 4 meters plus ito, one third siya ng 6. Next natin na i-consider is itong spandrel of the parabola. One third ng 6, negative 360. So, lagay natin siya as one third ng 6, negative 360. And of course, its center of gravity ay 4 plus uh, one fourth ng 6. Tama ba? Check natin kung tama siya class. No? So, ito siya. 4 meters ulit ito. Malamang, this is 1 fourth of 6 kasi nga ito is 3 fourths of 6. And lastly, for the third degree curve, 22.5 yung height niya, negative lang. So, this will be equal to 1 fourth ng 3 negative 22.5 multiplied by 4 plus 1 fifth ng 3. Tama ba siya? So, check ulit natin. So, ito ba yung centroid niya? Ito, 4 meter ito, malamang 1 fifth ito dahil third degree. 1 fifth ng 3 meters kasi yung base niya. So, yan. Tama siya, class. And, of course, computein na lang natin to using our calculator. So, ang magiging EI, deviation of A natin, with respect to the slope at E is 24,107.8. Uh, over 8. So, 24, 107 over 8 to class. Ayan na siya. So, ang next na i-consider na natin class ay yung deviation of D with respect sa E, ba? So, this will be the step 2. Sulat na lang natin siya. 
as EI, deviation of D with respect sa E, eh ang formula nun ay area ng DE multiplied by the centroid at D. Okay? So, kung titingnan nyo itong ating diagram class, ang concern lang naman natin ay ito. Okay? Kasi from D to E tayo. Ngayon, ang gagawin natin class is depende sa degree ng curve pero kailangan natin tong i-ratio and proportion or property nga. Halimbawa, sa third degree class, no, tawagin ko muna to class as X. ba diba, no? Tawagin ko muna yan as X. Which is, para mahanap mo siya, ang gagawin natin, 3 meter is to X is equal to 6 meter is to 180. Diba? So again, 3 meter ito is to X is to 6 meter 180. Kaya lang, alam mong mali ito dahil ang gagawin nyo nga dito dapat nakakube ito. Kung ano yung degree class ng curve natin, ganun dapat yung magiging exponent niya. So by ano, cube property, so 3 cube over X for the height is equal to uh, 6 cube is to 180 class. Okay? So, our answer for that is 22.5. So, tawagin natin to as 22.5 for this one. Ayan na siya. So, erase ko na to para hindi na siya makagulo. Ah, dito, walang problema class. Ratio and proportion lang naman to. Kasi nga, 3 naman na siya. Ang gawin mo na lang, divide mo na lang. 295.5, divide mo na lang to class ng to kasi nga, tig 3 meters to. For this triangle lang, So, walang problema dyan. Kaya, ang mangyayari, magiging 147.75 siya. Okay? So, 147.75 ito. And for the squared property, kung tatawagin natin itong segment na to as X, of course, ganon din class ang gagawin nyo. Katulad kay cube property. So, magiging um, 3 is to x, kaya is equal to 6, is to, remember this one, 360 siya, so 360. Kaya lang, since nasa parabola siya, that is for the second degree, dapat naka-squared ito. I hope that is clear. Okay, so therefore, this will be uh, 3 squared, is to x, is equal to, kasi nga, ang concern lang naman natin is specific area. Ang kagandahan dito, mga spandrel pa rin naman siya. Kaya pwede mong gamitin yung mga formulas ng spandrel. 360. Okay? So, ang final answer natin dyan ay 90. Okay? So, lagay mo na lang siya as 90. Raise ko lang to. Okay? So, I hope that is clear. 90 dito. Negative 90. Ayan. Pwede na tayo, class, mag-compute ng kanyang um, deviation. Kasi nga, yung mga centers of gravity din naman nila, class, ay located here. For instance, for the third degree, it is located somewhere here. For the second degree, it is here. Ah, for the first degree. And for the second degree, maybe here. Okay? So, ayan siya. Okay? So, sige, simulan na natin, class, yung computation. So, unahin ko muna yung my third degree, kaya magiging one-fourth ng 3 meters, 22.5. Multiply natin since centroid from D, 1 ng 3. So, check mo nga siya, class, kung tama. ba diba? Dapat 1 fourth ng 3 meters to, 22.5. Malamang dapat 1 fifth ito. Kasi nga, point din na, class, ang reference. Next is for the triangle. That is, it has an height of 147.75, right? So, sige, medyo mahaba-haba na rin kasang naging solution. Plus 1 half ng 3, 147. 0.75, multiply natin siya class ng 1 third ng 3. Kasi nga, kung titingnan nyo, ba diba, dapat ito ay 1 third ng 3. Itong for the triangle. And lastly, for the spandrel of the parabola, that will be equal to, negative 90 yung height niya. So, 1 third ng 3, negative 90, multiply natin siya ng 1 fourth ng 3. Kasi nga, ba diba, for the case of spandrel, Its center of gravity is located here. One fourth siya ng three meters. Okay, so ayon na siya class. Okay na tayo. Pwede na natin tong computein. Six hundred fifty seven over four siya class. So sulat natin siya ngayon. Oops, sorry. Six hundred fifty seven over four. Ayan siya, class. So, since nakuha na natin, class, yung dalawang deviations, proceed na tayo sa step 3, which is the sketching part na, no? So, 10 meters ulit to. Palitan ko lang yung kulay. So, 
So, patience lang to. Ah, ito yung beam natin. Ito yung supports. Tapos, yung mga points to be considered, A, D, and E. So, yung distance from D to E, diba? 3 meters to. Eh, malamang 7 meters na to. Tapos, yung ating elastic curve. And, the slope at E, kasi nga this time, ang reference natin, class I, point E. So, therefore, this will be, itong part, part na to ay EI, deflection at D. At the same time, ito naman ay EI, deviation of D with respect to E. And lastly, yung nandito ay EI, deviation ng A with respect sa E. Okay? So, lastly, for the step 4 nga is the ratio and proportion class. So, for ratio and proportion, ang gagawin nyo na lang dito class ay, yun na nga, EI, deflection at D, plus EI, mali yung symbol na nasulat ko dito, deviation pala, deviation. EI, deviation of D with respect to E, is to 3 meters, and that is equal to EI, deviation of A, with respect to E, is to 10 meters. So, just substitute class the values. So, of course, ang concern natin is the deflection, EI deflection at D, plus, of course, itong EI deviation at D, with respect to E, is 657 over 4. Okay, 657 over 4, and the distance or the, ano, is 3. By the way, itong ratio and proportion, ito siya, no? So, ito, over 3, which is ito, over 7. So, yung EI deviation of A naman, with respect to E, is 24,107 over 8 siya class. So, sige, sulat natin as 24,107 over 8 is to 10. So, therefore, ang magiging EI uh, deflection at D natin, pag kinompute natin siya class, ay equal sa, so, kaya na to ng shape solve, 657 over 4 is to 3 meter is equal to 24107 is to 8 or over 8 is to 10 meters so ang sagot natin ay 739.7625 so 739.7625 or the deflection at D will be erase ko lang to um 739.7625 0.7625 all over EI. So, ito na yung sagot natin class using the moment area theorem. And by the way, of course, inonote ko siya na downward siya kasi nga naman, pababa naman talaga siya in the first place. So, tingnan na lang natin class, no? We need to check, sorry, from the double integration method if this is really correct. So, dapat pag-reflect siya from the double integration. So, from DIM, Ito ang lumabas, negative 739.7625 over EI. So, the numerical values class are the same. Pacheck na lang sa calculator. But, of course, since negative siya, it indicates from the double integration method class na downward siya. So, yay! Yung ating mga sagot using the moment area theorem class ay mga tama. Kasi nga, of course, it is supported by the double integration method. Or in the future, kapag alam mo na yung other methods of determining the deflection, like the, def the energy method, i-check natin siya kung parehas. Kasi nga, dapat nga, pare-parehas yan class ng sagot. Okay? So, to summary for this one, uh, tapusin na natin yung discussion dito. So, for summary, ang una, yung letter A, the deflection at B is equal to, so, ano ba yung magiging deflection? For 73, 0.7417 over EI siya. Sige, sulat natin as 473.7417 over EI and please indicate that it is downward. Okay? So, for letter B naman, the deflection at C is equal to so, the deflection at C here is 801.15 over EI. So, 801.15 over EI. And please indicate that as downward. And for letter C, the deflection at D will be 739.7625 over EI. And again, class, this is downward. So, ayan na. Ibabox na lang natin siya. So, ayan na. Hai, salamat.
Natapos na tayo class for this discussion na nagtagal na almost one hour. So, I hope nga kahit um, alam ko yung iba, nabagot na ditong manood. So, I hope na tutunan nyo kung paano naman isolve ang mga non-prismatic sections. Okay? So, thank you class for giving me the opportunity to teach you and ingat na lang sa lahat. So, please watch the last example para naman sa moment area method again for the yun na nga, still for the simple beams. Sa pagkakataong ito, class, gagamitan na rin natin ng overhang siya. So, yun lang, class. Bye-bye!